Glenn Hampton, we call him our founding father uh, of the Rim Trail. He um, came to my home and talked to me about the idea of this project. I was excited about the idea, but wondering could this really happen? He would talk about not just a Tahoe Rim Trail, but also a volunteer organization working partnership with the Forest Service. If we do this right and we build it correctly, you know, this is going to be standing here a lot longer than I am. July 14th, 1984, I was one of the crew leaders of the first day of construction on the ground. There are dreamers and there are dream makers. And I called that board the dream makers. In 2001, you know, we closed the loop. That's part of what we're here celebrating uh, this year. Um, so, you know, a lot of people think, all right, we're all done, time to go home. Absolutely not. After we closed the loop, uh, was really just to start reassessing and seeing what we could fix, uh, what kind of user experience we can enhance. We're all volunteers. If you asked us, we would pay to do this. <laughs> I think we all love, love packing. <laughs> And uh, uh, it's work, but it's fun work. And I think it's probably the same way with the trail crews out there, that it's work, but it's fun work, and it's for a good cause. The Tower Room Trail itself, the connector trails and all, is over 200 miles of trail. And if you think about that, that's like walking from Reno to Berkeley. That's a lot of trail, and that's a lot of vegetation growing back, washouts from rainstorms and trees falling. And we've got a great group that go around and make sure that that trail stays open. I always tell people that come out to work is that you'll remember that, you'll come back and you'll remember these spots where you worked on the trail. We have a huge uh, additional area of work where we're trying to get individuals out on the trail, teach people how to do that in a sustainable manner and really make sure that the trail experience that we all are enjoying today is sustained in the future. There's a lot of unique history, a lot of unique geography and geology uh, here at the lake and all of it is is brought forward by our guides. We give uh, trail talks both on the trail and in the evening. It's just amazing to see the wows and they love the views. Evolution of something that was envisioned more for just equestrians and and hardcore hikers to something that almost everybody benefits from. Our mission used to be to build and maintain the Tahoe Rim Trail system, obviously. Practice and inspire stewardship, which is that educational component. And it used to be to promote the, the beauty of the Lake Tahoe region. But that key word promote, by changing that one word from promote to preserve, it really did offer volunteers, staff, um, our community, uh, everyone involved, kind of a new direction and a new way to think about how we want to manage the trail, manage the users and future goals. I think we've gone from promoting the trail to stewarding and preserving the trail. We are celebrating our 40 plus one anniversary. Uh, we had great plans to celebrate on our actual 40th anniversary. Unfortunately, the Caldor fire was wreaking havoc in the area and we were really just focused on making sure our staff, our volunteers in the area were safe. We were really concerned that we were gonna lose a, a large section of the southern portion of the Tahoe Rim Trail. Fortunately, um, it wasn't as bad as we were anticipating. We lost about two and a half miles of trail, mostly up at Echo Summit. Uh, we did have some impacts on the Echo Summit reroute, which was about a three-year project. The Tahoe Rim Trail Association is the main steward for the Tahoe Rim Trail, and a lot of people think that that is really where we limit our work, but uh, we really are focused on recreation throughout the basin, and I think the Van Sickle Park and the Van Sickle Connector Trail is an incredible example of our work to really expand recreational access and opportunities in the area. Uh, we built this trail as a way to connect the trail to the community in South Lake Tahoe, get more public access and public transit access. Each executive director brings something to the table and moves it in, you know, even a, a, a bigger direction. And I remember when Mark Kimbrough came on after I was the ED, um, he was wanting to see the backcountry camps for the kids, and it went, it just exploded. You know, he took that and just ran with it. And to me, that was just wonderful. 
The kids love it. Um, while we focus on teaching stewardship ethics and teaching these skills, our main priority is really just giving them positive experiences in the outdoors. Uh, we want them to walk away from the experience wanting to get back outside, engage in physical activity, and continue to feel ownership and responsibility for the natural world. It really does give these kids transferable life skills so that they can take what they're learning through the challenges and rewards of backpacking and apply that to their everyday lives. Something new, something I wouldn't have thought I would ever do in my life. I got to meet like this awesome people. We have incredible volunteers and board members and staff and donors that have really stepped up and for 40 years allowed our community, the folks in this region and from around the world who want to get out on the Tahoe Rim Trail to have that opportunity. Building our trail and adding our educational components to our association is absolutely something to celebrate. Five, ten, 100 years from now, I really want to see the Tahoe Rim Trail Association being able to provide users a really incredible outdoor experience that we're able to enjoy now and um, really being able to address the coming challenges that we're going to face with climate change and obviously forest fire. I think the organization can rise to the task and provide a world-class experience for people today and 100 years from now.